Hello everyone. In this video, I will highlight the discipline of social linguistics and survey some concepts of the discipline towards a better understanding of it. The present lesson is a short introduction in which I will define and present the scope of social linguistics. There is a full agreement that there is a strong relationship between language and society, each of which is dependent on the other as there is a reciprocal effect among both entities, language and society. In other words, the language we use is strongly affected by some social factors, such as the social background, the relationship between the speaker and the receiver, the context and manner of interaction. These factors and others are argued to have significant effect on the way we use language in our daily life. Sociolinguistics, then, is a field of inquiry that studies how these social factors affect language use. By means of illustration, the way we use language with our friends is not the same in terms of the style, the selection of words, etc. As that we use with our employers, we tend to be more formal in our language use with our employer than with our friends. For example, if you are to request your friend to bring something, you would say, can you bring the book? But if you are to request your employer, you would say, would you bring the book please? This example shows that the relationship between the participants affects their language use. Therefore, sociolinguistics is a field of inquiry that scientifically studies the relationship between language and society, that is, how social factors, as mentioned earlier, affect our language use. Now we turn to the scope of sociolinguistics. A question that we all may ask is why we need to study language in relation to society. The first answer to this question is that language and society are interrelated and we cannot speak about one without the other. That is to say, language, by definition, is a social entity and defining society cannot be done without reference to language. Society is a group of people who share the same language. That is to say, we cannot characterize a group of people as a society unless they share the same language. This is something that Hudson confirms. He said, we cannot take the notion language X for granted, since this is in itself a social notion in so far as it is defined in terms of a group of people who speak X. The second reason why we need to study language in relation to society is the fact that the value of a language is based on the society and the people who use that language not on the language itself. We usually tend to produce value judgments on a language based on the attitudes we hold for the people who use that language. For example, if we hate some people for one reason or another, it is more likely to hate their language and hold negative attitudes about it. The third reason is the fact that language is an act of identity. In other words, language plays an essential role in understanding and defining ourselves and others. For example, from the one's language use, we can say whether he is or she is a man or a woman, educated or not, which social class he or she belongs to, where he or she is from, etc. Language then 
has a clue bearing function. That is to say, one's language use provides clues and hints about what defines who they are. Also important is that language plays an essential role in understanding our social entourage and the world around us. From the way we think to the way we perceive things, all is determined by the language we use. Therefore, and to study any society and their way of life, it is highly recommended to refer to the language they use. This is what is named as the superior of hypotheses. Finally, we need to study language in relation to society because language is not only a means of communication in society but it is also a means of establishing and maintaining social relationships through exchanging the free goods or safe topics like greetings, adjacency pairs, congratulations, etc. In every society, these aspects are mandatory or obligatory in other words. Otherwise, your behavior would be accountable. This entails that your behavior would be assigned negative explanations. For example, imagine that your friend passed by you and did not greet you. What would be your explanation for this behavior? Of course you would assign negative explanations to such behavior. Therefore, and it is with this background that it is very important to study language in relation to society. because. There is a strong relationship between language and society and they cannot be separated. Before we end this video, let me recapitulate the two main ideas shared in this stream. Sociolinguistics is a scientific field of inquiry that investigates the relationship between language and society and how the social factors affect our language use. The second idea is that there is a strong relationship between language and society and this justifies why it is necessary for studying language in relation to society. I hope that this video was helpful in providing an insightful introduction to sociolinguistics and why we need it as a discipline of its own right. Please don't forget to share your ideas and recommendations in the comments section below. Thank you very much.